Hey guys, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed today. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about net metering and gross metering and why these days you really should be on a net meter. Well, let's talk about the past for one second. So let's draw the sun up here because the sun is our friend, helps us save money and also helps the environment and helps keep the planet happy. On this side, I'm going to draw my house or a house. And on this side, I'm going to draw the grid. Nasty old grid. Try and avoid using that as much as we can. So, in the past, we had what we called a gross meter. No, it wasn't disgusting. It's not a bird. It's just gross. And I'll explain why it's called gross. So, this was the old gross meter. It was gross because you get charged for anything going in from the grid to your house. And if you had solar panels, like for example, let's put solar panels here. Anything you generate on your house, on your roof, and you feed back to the grid, you get a credit for as well. So for example, back in the early 2010s, the feed-in tariff in New South Wales was a fantastic 60 cents per kilowatt hour. And back in the good old days, at the same time, electricity was about 15 cents per kilowatt hour. As you can see, there is a big difference. So, you get credit for 60 cents per kilowatt hour, you get charged 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So really, if you're getting that rate, there's no incentive to offset your house usage. You just want to get the maximum amount you can from the grid and just pay a small amount back for any usage here. So that is gross usage. You get credit for 60 kilo for cents per kilowatt hour, you get, uh, you get charged 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's all fine and dandy if you have a feed-in tariff that's higher than your uh, grid tariff. Well, that doesn't really happen anymore in uh, 2019. These days, the grid is more like 30 cents per kilowatt hour here in New South Wales. And at the moment, the best you can really hope for for a feed-in tariff is about 20 cents per kilowatt hour. But realistically, most companies actually only give you about 15 cents at the very best and you know maybe even 12 I've heard 11 to 12 so I'm on 11 cents per kilowatt hour let's just say so as you can see here if I'm producing energy from my solar panels and I am getting charged 30 cents per kilowatt hour but I feed my electricity back at 11 cents per kilowatt hour that's not good in fact that sucks I don't want to be charged 30 cents and only give back the same energy in 11 cents per kilowatt hour so, as a result, we have a net meter to, to deal with this problem. Net metering. So, for example, if I, <coughs> if I am producing one kilowatt from my solar panels, and my load here is one kilowatt, uh, I'm going to use all that energy to my house and not feed back anything back to the grid. And the grid is not going to supply anything to my house. So that is fine. That's a very good equation one to one. If I am producing two kilowatt hours, or sorry, two kilowatt to my house, and my load is one kilowatt, that excess is now one kilowatt. So I will get, I will get um, a credit of one kilowatt at 11 cents per kilowatt hour, which is good. I get 11 cents if I use that for one hour. If it was back to the old gross meter, I would still get charged for that one kilowatt of usage at 30 cents. I would get 11 cents back in credit, and that balance is 30 cents minus 11 cents is 19 cents that I would get charged. That's not good. That would suck, like I said. So it's good now the solar panels offset any usage required for the grid, and it gets a credit back for anything else you need. So that's all fine and dandy for a one phase or single phase home with net metering. What happens if you've got a three phase home? Well, let's do that now. So let's expand that a little bit. So let's stick with a single phase inverter for your solar panels. So let's single phase up here. You guys still see that? Excellent, good. Let's go three phase for a home. So let's expand this home a little bit. And we're gonna draw a few more wires here. So let's go red phase for this phase. Let's go blue phase for another phase. And let's go, it's supposed to be white, but we'll go black phase. And let's say our single phase inverter 
can produce, let's say, 5 kilowatts, because that's like the maximum export in New South Wales for a single phase inverter solar panel. So let's say your grid, sorry, your home is experiencing or uh, using a load of 3 kilowatts in total. Let's assume that your house is perfectly balanced. So each phase is using one kilowatt supplying. Yeah, each phase is using one kilowatt. So that's one phase, that's two phase, that's three phase, one kilowatt each. And you've got a net meter right here. So if you had a gross meter, you would still be charged for supply from the grid for three kilowatts and you would get a feed-in tariff of five kilowatts. So if I was getting charged for three kilowatts at say 30 cents per kilowatt hour, I'd be charged 90 cents. If I were to give a feed-in tariff, five kilowatt times 19, sorry, times 11 cents, it would be 55 cents in total. So as you can see, I'm getting charged 90 cents, but I give back to the grid 55 cents. So that's a 35 cent deficit, right? So I'm actually getting charged, even though I'm producing more energy than I need for my home. And again, that would suck. Not so good. So, with a net meter, what a net meter does is this. So, on the single phase, it's supplying one kilowatt load to this phase here. And you've got four kilowatts of excess going back to the grid, which is great. Right, so one kilowatt to the house, that cancels itself out. 4 kilowatt excess. So, in that case, oops, sorry. In that case, what the net meter does is it uh, it actually nets it all out, which means that okay, it sees that it's got four kilowatts coming back this way, and it's asking for two kilowatt for from the grid to power the home for the extra two phases, two and three. So it goes four minus two, two kilowatt credit or feed-in tariff, feed-in or export, whatever term you want to use. So it's going to pay you 2 kilowatt times 11 cents, 22 cents in credit. So you're getting a 22 cent credit for the same situation, whereas in the previous situation, if you had a gross meter, you'd be charged, what was it, 35 cents. So that's like, you know, a 57 cent difference from credit to a deficit with a gross meter. So that is why a net meter is really important if you've got solar panels. You're going to lose out if you don't use a net meter. What if you had a three-phase inverter? Well, it's very similar. So three-phase inverter. This situation works even better. So three-phase inverter means it's supplying one kilowatt to each of these phases, right? So uh, let's cross this one out because that no longer applies. So line there. So one kilowatt to this one, one kilowatt also to this one. So three kilowatts going this way. The grid no longer needs to supply the house, but the net meter detects five kilowatts. Well, actually detects two kilowatts because it's only two, well, five minus one, two, three. There's two kilowatts going this way. Okay, so it'd be 5 minus 3 kilowatts equals 2 kilowatts in credit. So this one is the same as this one. So same thing, you still get 2 kilowatts back to the grid in feed-in tariff. Same situation. What if you've got a battery? Now this is interesting. Currently, uh, I should put a disclaimer here. First I'll rub this out, but currently as it stands, I'll use Tesla as an example. Tesla uses Gateway. Gateway is like the brains of the operation for a Tesla battery. Right, so. I'll draw these lines back so we're not confused. So, okay, so back here with the panels. And you've got a battery here. So let's call that the power wall two. Let's call that the gateway. So the gateway is the brains of the power wall too and controls everything that happens with your home's electricity. From, on this point, from this point, if you've got a gateway 
uh, and it's producing, say if you've got enough charge in the battery, say, say it's 100% full. And it's night time, okay? So the gateway is the one with supplying the energy from the power wall to the house. So let's go back to this scenario here where there's three phase, sorry, three phase home, and it's using a three kilowatt load at the moment. Now because the power wall to and gateway is single phase, I'll get to a three phase gateway in a second, but if it's a single phase gateway, what happens is this. So the gateway senses that on this phase here, which is what it's connected to, it needs to supply a one kilowatt load to this house. All right. And for these other two phases here, the grid is actually supplying the extra load, one kilowatt, one kilowatt. So in essence, the gateway thinks, okay, it's got two kilowatts supplying the house. I need to discharge two kilowatts back this way. One kilowatt this way to this phase, two kilowatts to make up for these two, for these two phases, which are also using one kilowatt. So the net meter does this. So the net, so one T or two T's? Anyway, just put one T, I think it's two. Anyway, you tell me if it's one or two. So on these two phases here, on the blue phase and the black phase, it's supplying one kilowatt, right? So there's two kilowatts going this way, but there's also two kilowatts going back this way from the power wall too. Two minus two, zero. So effectively, even though electricity is coming from here, on your bill, it'll be zero. Because the net meter goes, okay, two minus two, two going this way, two going back this way. Let's not build this customer at all. So that's how the, the gateway works with a three-phase home with a net meter. Obviously, that's not going to work with a uh, three-phase, sorry, with a gross meter. It just wouldn't work. You'd just be paying too much. You'd be paying for the grid usage and then getting a crappy feed-in tariff, which means you'll means you be getting charged for electricity, which has been covered already by the power wall too. Now, the gateway too may eliminate that problem with the fact that the grid is still being used because the gateway too is uh, a three-phase solution apparently. But for that to work, I think you need three power wall twos. So you can't, you know, you, I just don't, can't see a way around having a 13 and a half kilowatt hour power wall two that's three-phase. You're going to have to split that battery into three like that. You know, if it's, if it's the current 13.5 kilowatt hour battery, you divide that by three, that's like, I don't know, it's like four and a bit, right? So four point, whatever, three, right? 4.3 each, maybe a bit more, 4.4, .4. whatever whatever the case, it needs to be a separate inverter for each one. So it can feed into a three phase gateway, right? Like this, three phase gateway. So that it can supply each phase on its own merit. End up with less usage of the battery on each phase. And uh, you know, unless your load is perfectly balanced, it's gonna be hard because even if you're off by you know a little bit, one of these batteries is gonna be or one sector of that battery is going to be drained quicker than the rest. So really, to be a true three-phase power wall two, you kind of need a really big one. You have to put 13.5 on each one to really make it worth your while. And you and I know that batteries aren't cheap the way they are at the moment. There is a power pack, which I'll get to you, get to another video, but essentially you need to have a capacity that's three, that's three times as big uh, for a three phase home. So really, I think the cheapest and the most effective solution is to stick with your one power or two and, uh, and have a gateway two. For in the future, if you can afford another two batteries, you can link up you know, three power wall twos, like that. And a gateway two could potentially then work with, you know, a three phase inverter for solar panels. And then you could potentially even have power, each power wall two supplying uh, each phase in a backup situation. Because that realistically to me works, you know, tell me otherwise if, I'm, if I've got this wrong, but you know, a gateway two that's three phase could potentially work with three power wall twos and a three phase inverter. Electrically, I think that could work. All right guys, that, that last bit's a bit advanced, but um, you saw initially how you can make a power wall two um, you know, using a net meter with the three phase home. Not a true green solution, but it, it can work. And that's, uh, that's the explanation. All right guys, uh, leave a comment, ask any questions. Uh, a lot of information was covered here, but uh, 
that's I thought something that we need to cover if you're going to play with Powerwall 2s and solar panels uh, you need to understand what net metering is and uh, how that's different from gross metering and why we're going through net metering currently with electricity prices the way they are. Alright guys, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully it's a lovely day wherever you are in this world. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for supporting Ludicrous Feed. Looking forward to hearing from you. And as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. Happy charging!